it was not so far that in 19 uh, 1951 a registration board was formed that board responsibility was to formulate some other regulations related to the aviation uh, students that was the time when uh, aviation was getting uh, uh, aviation was transducing itself transforming itself into a into a business into a modern way of uh, life for the people so uh, people were coming towards the uh, aviation so different requirements for regulations was required so very frequently people were changing their regulation regulatory bodies so in 1971 civil aviation act was passed again and then at last in at 27 28 september 2003 easa took over all the responsibilities and uh, easa was the only regulatory body after forming different uh, different regulatory bodies which were the predecessors of predecessors of the uh, easa easa has took over the responsibility of countries coming under the european commission and the uh, european commission and the european union now many countries are adopting the european uh, the easa rules and easa regulations now what are the responsibilities of this easa easa's main responsibility is to rule making they make their rule they make regulatory th- this is a regulatory authority so it provide different kinds of rules it provide certification for aircrafts as well as for the people working for the working in the aviation business and the another thing is to provide uh, approvals f- and standardization for uh, aviation business at the end they give a uh, handy handy suggestions for finance and the business services to the aircraft now coming towards the easa that what kind of business easa is having and what kind of business they offer to the whole world in this uh, that easa is the training and e examination including part m for uh, part 145 part 66 part 147 and the human factors and the sms training so the basic uh they are one of the bu- their business is to provide training and this training comes under the uh, ano 14 part 145 for the part 147 now coming towards that uh what is 145 easa part 145 is basically line maintenance service line maintenance service means this is a this is a facility according to the easa where uh, you can provide maintenance facilities for the aircrafts no one what is uh, 147 as uh, i have read earlier that uh, 145 and 147 is there 147 is a training kind of facility where you could provide the training to the training to those people who are working on, on the aircraft no there are some other parts or services like continuing airworthiness management camo continuing air worthiness management comes under the part m and the uh, part i services these are the part m and the part i services which provides air worthiness management that your aircraft remain air worthy uh, and for uh, this air worthiness they have a management kind of uh, organization mag- management kind of regulatory authority it's their duty it's the duty of the easa to provide aircraft monitoring and Uh, preservation if you are monitoring the standardization and the preservation of the aircraft that that, that that also comes under the responsibilities of the easa now you know that many aircrafts are under service in the world and these aircrafts how they would be delivered and how their redelivery could be act and their classification they that all come under the uh, under the easa another important thing that the flight operation engineering documentation and it management you know that uh, as far as the modernization in the aviation comes different kind of flight operation engineering are coming very sophisticated so easa provide guidelines for flight operation and documentation and it management of aviation business the second hand aircraft transactions management if and if, if a country is having Uh, try to buy an aircraft which is second hand aircraft then 
that comes also uh, that also comes under the regulations of EASA that provide the transaction management that how that transaction to took place furnishing of an on site managers crews engineers and technician staff they provide a furnishing they uh, means to say that they also provide a, uh, this is this is a regulatory body which regulates the crew members engineers and the technician technical staffs related to the aviation business now this is the yasa um, is the yasa is research the responsibility of yasa to uh, to provide a regulate regulation that how to set up an a complete structure for an airline and if an airline is working then mros and the engineering department set up how an airline would conduct uh, for its man, man, engineering kind of facilities that uh, that guideline would also come from the easa technical audits and assessments of airlines mros and the engineering departments uh, it is it's also uh, also the responsibility of easa to conduct different audits for different uh, airlines for different schools for different facilities where you are conducting the where the aviation maintainers are conducting their maintenance facilities another thing that implementation and monitoring of safety management and quality assurance for airlines and the mros it's a very important factor that uh, it's the responsibility of easa to implement the safety regulations the quality regulations quality assurance is very important so maintenance resourcefulness is also the uh, to to guide the to guide different airlines and their people for safety and the management and the quality assurance it's also it also the comes under the influence of the easa people easa regulations now as you know that with the modernization of the world different things are come are coming under to, uh, under the information technology so aviation softwares are also important for providing a good and a handy uh, handy uh, control over aviation business this is also and the quality system is also important so uh, again easa's responsibility to provide uh, guidelines for aviation software solutions as you know that in the world uh, people who are who are under who are in the business of aviation they need to uh, they they want every time they uh, they think about the reduction of uh, cost reduction so so cost reductions and how to reduce the cost of uh, business this is also a factor where easa provides the guidelines now different uh, other organization uh, regulatory authorities or the regulatory organizations are working for example international civil aviation organization io sain the federal aviation authority and the easa these all uh, certifications would be provided by the, these these uh, organization and they should have a good relation with each other for example that if easa is to inter in interact with the federal aviation uh, federal aviation authority or the for international civil aviation organization for their for their workings they they would have a coordination with each other so it's very important for uh, for aviation business as well now coming towards this thing that uh, we it's it's related to um, us as as far as we are student how we can how we can become b1 or b2 uh, engineer that is part 66 year of maintenance licensing it's the basic purpose of the people who are working who are getting training to become an aircraft engineer so what they need to do here is the basic requirement you need to enroll yourself in the 147 approved course uh, 147 approved uh, school when you would go there then there is a course that is called as the 14 part 147 approved course then you have to clear that uh, approved 147 course then examination in part 147 examination of that course would be held examination in the competent authority or the national examination gadgets means to say that that 147 organization would have its own own uh, examination system but according to the regulation uh, regulations and the uh, rules made by the easa for that and some other uh, national examination uh, credits or rules can also be implemented 
but main focus would be on the ASR rules and regulation so first of all you have to this is the uh, basic knowledge about the uh, enrolling yourself in the uh, one f part 147 approved course coming towards this after this when you enroll yourself when you clear uh, clear the basic course of 147 what happens duration uh, depends on complete uh, completed training completion of 147 approved course or completion national training skill worker both can happen that if you have cleared the 147 part 147 course or your national training skill worker an aircraft maintenance uh, organization are under supervision of independent certifying staff and on operating aircraft and means to say that you need to work uh, as a certifying staff or you are working under supervision of someone then you need to you need to be regulated by a maintenance organization shall be shall be practical experience shall be practical experience and uh, means to say the man who is who passed the 147 approved course he need to have a practical experience as well a recent experience in subcategory needed particular experience means to say that if some subcategory is there that subcategory experience should also be required could be civil non not civil experience means to say that if someone is having a civilian civil kind of experience or the military experience that would also be eligible shall be representative cross section of task means to say that here he want to that uh, you, you can cross refer different tasks as for you if you are working on the military aircraft then you can cross refer to it to if both the civilian aircraft civil aircraft uh, and the military aircraft are having engine you can cross refer it shall be acceptable to the competent authority and uh, shall be properly uh, recorded for example logbook means to say that that uh, authority who is providing you the exp experience of that uh, that uh, competent competency you need to have you need to manage a proper logbook for that that is also a requirement now coming towards the uh, this 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 was for all the here you can see that this is the barrier where you can come under the uh, you are you become eligible for the AML any aircraft maintenance uh, legislation uh, licensing aircraft maintenance licensing here you would be able to have a aircraft maintenance licensing now coming towards the type experience you want to have a specific uh, specific uh, kind of uh, uh, specific kind of working on a specific aircraft then you need to have what you have type training course plus OGT as shown in scheme one now type training course of that particular aircraft on job training of that uh, on job training is also mandatory now what is on job uh, training an aircraft maintenance organization are under supervision of certifying staff you need to do an OGT in aircraft maintenance organization under someone's super, uh, supervision who is who is also a certifying staff you need to have a practical experience you need to uh, a representative cross section of tasks you need to cross uh, cross section your task and properly recording of logbook what you are doing you need to record it on a logbook and type examination at the end you would have a type examination if you would clear all this you would you would have a uh, licensing of a particular organ, uh, aircraft so that's all uh, all about the uh, type rating course here there is the barrier which you would cross which you would touch after clearing this type of training now you you would become eligible for the type rating manufacturer subgroup rating endorsement on on the AML your AML would be of particular aircraft so a conclusion is about the European Aviation Safety Agency is that this is a regulatory authority, this is a certifying authority, this is authority which uh, approves and standardizes the aviation, this is the authority which provides finance plus business services.